and we're back with more absolute value inequality goodness. Now, just like we mentioned with absolute value equations, you have to get the absolute value by itself first before you can figure out do you have a restriction where you're trying to keep things bounded and close by or if you're pushing away. So let's do that here. First thing we need to do is get the absolute value by itself. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides, just like that. So I get the absolute value of x plus 5 is greater than or equal to 14. Remember, absolute value measures distance. So I want your distance from me to be more than 14 units. So think about what that means. If I want your distance to be more than 14 units, am I saying stay close by? Or am I saying stay away from me? I want your distance from me to be more than 14. That means stay away. Right? And so if I'm saying stay away, I'm talking about two sections of the number line. I'm talking about two separate inequalities that I have to set up and solve. So the first of these is where we say we need to be pretty much just as you read this, greater than or equal to 14. The other option is when you have x plus 5, change the direction here to be less than or equal to and change the sign here to be negative 14. Because remember what we were saying. We're saying you want to be to the right of 14 or this guy which is to the left of negative 14. That's where you can live. So now we take each of these inequalities and we solve them. So we'll subtract 5 on both sides. x is greater than or equal to 9 over here. Subtract 5 on both sides again. x is less than or equal to negative 19. And let's put this on the number line so that we can see exactly what we're talking about and make sure that what I'm saying really is true. Please make sure that you maintain the order of the real numbers on the number line so it's negative 19 on the left, positive 9 on the right side, greater than or equal to 9 is a closed circle on 9 and going to the right. And then less than or equal to negative 19 is a closed circle on negative 19 going to the left. So it's just like I said, these guys should be going in opposite directions because I'm, I want your distance to be more than. Now it's not more than 14 and less than negative 14. It was at the beginning, but as I solve this for x, those intervals can shift around. They could go in or go out when you multiply or divide, so just watch out for that. And now we write our answer using interval notation. So we're going from negative infinity to negative 19, bracket on negative 19 because we are including that. You've got the gap right here, so we're going to use the union sign. We pick back up with a bracket for 9 to infinity. So there is our answer in interval notation. We expected to have two different parts of the number line for our solution set, so we needed two different inequalities. Alright, now let's look at this next one. This next one we have the absolute value already by itself, and it's less than 10. Absolute value is distance. So I want your distance to be less than 10. That means I'm not trying to push you away. I'm trying to restrict your movement, restrict how far away you are. That means you can go as far out as positive 10 on the right or negative 10 on the left. So those become your initial boundaries. So that means that this expression is bounded between negative 10 and positive 10. Now, just like I mentioned before, you could take this guy and separate this into two separate inequalities. Now, the reason I don't do this is because I want us to understand that by creating a restriction, you're bounded, like a, you've got the boundaries here, you've got one section of the number line that you're talking about. And with one section of the number line, we only need to have one string of inequalities like this. But you may also go up to the side and say, that 3x minus 16 is less than 10 and because you have to do an intersection 
3x minus 16 is going to be greater than negative 10. So you could separate this and do two different inequalities, but these two inequalities are right here. All right, so let's talk about the steps that we would take. The first step is to add 16. We did the compound inequalities not that long ago, and we know that what I do to one part of this three-part inequality, I do to all three parts. So 6 is less than 3x, which is less than 26. And then we get to finish this by dividing all three parts by 3. All right, so we get 2 is less than x, which is less than, pardon the mess, 26 over 3. So we expected this to be just one section of the number line. We started off being bounded between negative 10 and 10. By adding 16, that shifts the section we're looking at. So it goes from negative 10 to 10 to 6 to 26. Then dividing by 3 shrinks that in. So you're going from 2 on the left to 26 thirds on the right side. X, which represents your solutions, are those values that are in between. By having less than but not equal to, these points will remain open. And the interval notation is parentheses 2 to 26 thirds. Parentheses because these endpoints are not included. And so there we go. There's that difference between when the absolute value is greater versus when it's less than.